Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Anishka Nunes. She's an audiologist, and she shared last week her faith story, and this week she's continuing to share about how God's working in her life. Welcome back, Anishka. Thank you, Geraldine. Yes, you um, shared about how your, you and your hu- you met your husband and how it was you felt God's will. Could you tell me more about your faith journey and how that came to the knowledge of God's will. Mm. Well, through my husband, that was how my faith deepened. And because I, I looked to him and, and I could see the Holy Spirit in him. He was going to confession, as I said. And that made me want to go. That made me more inspired to be more active in my parish. Mm. Um, but I, at the time, I didn't know that I was going to marry him. We would just became good friends. And then over time... You know, he asked me out and then we started dating and I was just open. I was like, just, you know, God, if this is your will, you know, let me know. Give me some signs here. So you had a relationship with God, like almost a very close friend. So that's, yeah, that's to yeah. you is an important thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I couldn't really, like my parents didn't approve. And when I told them that I was going out with my husband, um, they like my dad just had all these reasons he had like four sheets of paper all wow. the reasons why i shouldn't um, go out with him he said that it was just love and feelings but i felt that it was something more to it i wasn't being frivolous or yes um i was thinking with my head uh, and he was a good man i you know i couldn't i couldn't see what my parents um, had against him. They didn't really want to meet him either. So they were just judging him based on, you right. know, yeah. facts. Yeah. Oh, wow. And at the time you, um, you were saying that he, um, earlier on, that he actually helped you to experience God's love. Yeah. And see God as more relation than, you know, just, just going to church. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What was it about him that really helped you? I think just just the way he was, just very friendly. He did reach out. He knew a lot of people. He did reach out to them as well. And I observed that and I wanted to share that. And he also knew a lot about the Catholic Church's teachings and theology. Mm. And um, I really wanted to grasp and learn learn that and learn why we why do we go to church? Why do we believe this and that? What's the reasons behind it? So that inspired me to increase my knowledge as well. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some people see that, you know, the Catholic Church is more into knowledge and rules and regulations. Have you experienced that it's different to that? Yeah, because it's not just that. It's not just like knowing it because there's no use knowing everything. Um, but we are meant to show our our faith so we need to act our faith with good works and in our actions to everyone to all all of Mm. um, people yeah and and you when you were um, discerning um, about your husband getting married um, how did you work out what God's will was yeah well I thought that I would get some epiphany and you know some message said yep that's the one (laughs) but it didn't happen like that Um, I had I had to battle between my family saying no and they were um, they were even like threatening to disown me wow so it was pretty full on very emotional time um, for me and um, it was like but something was pulling me towards my husband and that with together we would grow closer to God and we would have you know to to be able to help people be closer to God by uh. you know by our union um, yeah so I think I prayed a lot I went to World Youth Day and I, I did that because that was my journey and I wanted to tell them about yeah. a bit about the World Youth Day yeah. for the audience yeah so World Youth Day is a gathering every two or three years of young Catholics all around the world. Uh And um, the last one was in 2013 in Uh Rio de Janeiro in Uh Brazil. Uh Yeah, so 
it's a long way from Australia, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I won't forget it because on there we really grew closer to God and we had a lot of time to pray and I talked to priests about all the issues and, you know, whether I should marry this man or not. Mm. Um, actually, that at that time, he, we we weren't engaged or anything, but we did talk about marriage, so mm. it was something we were discerning. Um, but they just said, you know, you need to just, just think about, you know, what you're going to do and with God, does it align with God's plan? Mm. Um, and sometimes you have to make sacrifices and mm. you, you, f you can't please your family. At the end of the day, you have oh, to wow. follow God. Mm. So... Um, yeah, it's not easy, um, but now that I'm married, I see that, yeah, that's what God wanted for, for me. Yeah. So they, what, they, till you got married, they were still battling, were they? Yeah, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, yeah, even now, I think they're slowly. Yeah, slowly know, coming around. Yeah, come around, but now I don't mind, like I don't really care now. I'm married to him yes. um, and I'm happy. Um, we grow in love each day more and more. Yes. And, and and God is in there, in, in yeah. our union. Oh, that's good. So, like when I walked down the aisle, I just felt just this warmth, and I just felt so light. And at that moment, I was like, "Yes, this is the right thing. Doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. They what hate it. Things, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, so there's nothing about his character that they didn't like. It was just more what he stood for. No, just like facts, like you know, work or um, yes. financial situation. All oh, right. So know, was the other. Things external things yeah. not his character not so. the character no because they didn't even meet him yet they were judging all these things and they yes. didn't make effort to yes. get to know him mm. yeah yeah so that was a bit challenging time <laughs> yeah definitely yeah but I th that also deepened my faith more because I prayed to God a lot more um, and I wanted yeah, healing because it's very traumatic you know, yeah so you've forgiven <laughs> them t for for you yeah. know, having that conflict. Yeah, I mean, they do love me, I know, and want the best for me. Yes, um, they're just trying to get the best for That's them. right, but what they think is best is not is yes, what God right. wanted, so. Yeah, but on that note, we need to go for a break. Sure. <laughs> You're watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us, and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Anishka Nunes. She's an audiologist and she's been sharing her faith story. Hi, Anishka, Hi welcome again. back. <laughs> yeah, you shared so beautifully about your seeking God's will with your mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now you've been also seeking God in your in your work life, you know, wanting to do His will. Mm. Could you share your, your challenges of, you know, being a Christian Catholic in, in the workforce today? Yeah. Well, after I got married, I started a new job. And, um, yeah, at my work, I'm the only practicing Catholic and really the only person practicing any religion, um, I would say. Um, and for me, yeah, it's hard because the, you know, Catholic with what's going on in the media doesn't exactly have a good image. Yes. So people can be very um, hurtful and they attack. Um, so sort of, I didn't, at first I didn't say that I was Catholic, you know, I sort of just avoid talking about religion topics at all <laughs> um, but with some things like once I got used to my colleagues and felt comfortable with them um, you know if they asked like what did you un do on the weekend you know yes. things would come up you know everyday questions <laughs> um, they say oh I, I, I my friend uh, my colleague asked me you know what you do on the weekend said I went to the young leaders retreat and it's like oh what was that about um, <laughs> so yeah I said you know it's it's um, to help young people in ministry and have a retreat for them as well and then learn how they can help the people that they serve more I told I her more about about the church um, she was 
Catholic, she's Catholic, baptized Catholic, but not practicing. I see. And because the way she was brought up was um, like being taught by the nuns and it was very like, you know, strict, I, I imagine, see. like yeah. very strict by the rules, like they had to do certain routines. Not much love sort of thing. No, so I feel like it's like that God is like the punitive God that she would have known that if you, you can't do this, this is this. Um, and if you do, there's punishment. So the nuns at that time portrayed that as the image of God. Yeah. But you've kind of seen different. Yeah, and I've seen different. Um, so I was telling her more about that, that, you know, we do work with young people. There's lots of events for young. You know, there's music. Like, it's really friendly environment. Yes. Um, and, yeah, that yeah, it's changed quite quite a bit. So through our conversations, I guess things have come up. I, you know, I shed some light about the Eastern Rite churches for her. She didn't know that they existed. Um, so it's just, yeah, whenever things come up um, through my work or conversations, then I might just slide a little bit in there each yes. time. So I think, I guess, also through my work and through my behaviour, I'm, you know... Um, for people to look and see, and then hopefully they will be drawn to the faith more. Oh, yeah. By your witness. That's right, by witness, yeah. And um, what about the others in the, that work with you? Yeah, so um, there's like a few atheists, um, pretty staunch atheists, but I think that they do believe, like they do act with love, and we do the same profession, and. They, they they definitely act with love and respect, so they are acting, yeah. um, you know, in the same way that I act, really. Um, but yeah, they just don't believe there is a God, really. Mm. But you know, I'm not going to judge them. So just listen to each other's views if it comes up, and you know, They've with got time. a few uh, <laughs> Richard Dawkins fans. Yeah, they? that's right. Yeah, so um, they're very firm on their beliefs. Um, and you know i think it's not in a way we we were never going to just like convert someone straight away when you meet them but hopefully as being a witness as you said that over time they might know mm. you know and and um and do realize that there is god yeah. yes do they um tease you at times with things like you know that the media yeah, I mean, not really brings up, and it's like for me, it's a sensitive topic. But mm. um, you know, obviously, it's not everyone. So it's just you know, bad publicity always yes. gets more press than yes. good publicity. Yeah, so definitely. In all the other churches, there are things going on, obviously. So um, I mean, recently we had a conversation about Pope Francis, and you know that sort of. And even though they're not religious, but they do. Um, they approve of him, um, <laughs> so they see because he acts like he's a very humble man. Yes. Um, through the works that he does, that gets publicised, and yes. they see that. So mm. he's a good person in their eyes. And he, so. yeah, and he doesn't seem to want to go for the pomp and the yeah. too many of the rules and regulations as much. As so. much, yeah, and it's so it's all about, I guess, faith in action. Um, yes. With him. And I was very blessed to actually meet him. Really? Yeah. Wow. So after our um, marriage, we yeah. ended up going to Rome. Yes. And we had audience with him. So lots oh, of married wow. couples from oh. all over the world. Yeah. So that was like for me very humbling because meeting Pope Francis is like meeting your grandfather. <laughs> a very sweet man. Um, and so I, sh I was able to share that at my work and people were like, oh, wow. wow. You know, so... But I had to. I couldn't just say, "Oh, I'm," you know, "I met him." I don't want to be like bragging or anything. <laughs> but just the conversation came up, and I wanted to highlight, "Yep, that he's human, like you and I." Yeah. Yeah, and you've been involved in uh, a course called Love and Responsibility. Mm. Yeah, yes. I was. Yeah, so um, it's been on a few times, and um, the first time when I did it was while I was getting to know my husband. Um, so we did it together and we read a book about love and responsibility. And it's a work written by John Paul II, um, all about the theology of the body. And that's really the start of the theology of the body. That's more um, 
sort of more complex as you go on. Mm. But it was really good. We got uh, a lot of young people together and we read this book. So each week, chapter by chapter. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to get to know more about it, but uh, we need to go for a break so we can pause there. Yeah. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Anishka Nunes. She's an audiologist and she's been sharing her faith in the course she recently went to, Love and Responsibility. Welcome back, Anishka. Thanks, Geraldine. Yeah, you shared about how that course, Love and Responsibility, you have been going to and you also now are part of a team mm. could you tell us more about this course and how it's helped your marriage yeah so um yeah as i said like first of all i was a participant and for me it was really good to have that work to understand about what love is all the different types of love that there are um and what the catholic church teaches about love and marriage and, and that sort of thing um, and then the second round I was a leader so um, basically it was we had discussion groups afterwards so I was in a small discussion group to just lead the conversation and there was mm. certain questions to follow in the book yeah, yeah just to guide the dialogue between everyone yeah so that was really good because I learned a lot of things come up in the conversations about daily life about um, relationships and um, that sort of thing, the pressure in society, different cultures. Yes. Yeah. Who was it written by? This um, well, the one that we did, it was, I think it was an Edward Sree book. Um, so it's the original work was written by John Paul II, uh -huh. but it's quite a thick book. Um, so there's different authors, they've done a summary just in more basic language. Oh, right. Yeah. And made it into a course through his teaching. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so basically we just read the book chapter by chapter and then there are questions. Yeah. Yes, and how yeah. do you think it's helping marriages? Yeah, well, it's really um, good to understand about what love is. Um, and there are things in there that make you think about how you act um, mm. and what you know the general culture is about to do with love and marriage and that sort of thing um, so it does help that yeah we did the course together so we could talk about things really in a deep intimate way mm. um, so yeah I definitely recommend it to everyone yeah that's great uh, is it also quite practical it is like um, Basically, we had a lot of discussions about the practical things like what to do if, um, you know, if your if your friends are in a bad relationship that you can see, you know, if your friend's being hurting, yes. would you say anything? You know, how to identify different friendships I if see. it's just, you know, friendship out of convenience, I um, see. you know, that sort of thing. So we had a lot of discussions afterwards after we read the chapter and we had like a spiritual advisor, mm. priest or theologian to help answer all the deep yes. heavy questions. Yeah. yeah. I suppose I, I've done a bit of that theology and what I find is good is that there's a focus on loving for not only for my sake but for the other person's That's sake, right. not yeah. using the person. Yeah, so um, it's really for the greater good of the beloved that's that's what love is so wanting them to be better to be closer to god and helping them on that journey yes and what a witness that could be to our society because i think a lot of relationships today mm. are based on you know what am i getting out of it or entitlement yeah. and people feeling abuse or people being used to for sexual pleasure or mm. or people feeling that they're not getting there's an injustice, isn't it? Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
I had like uh, when you say about use I had um, after I was always doing the course I ended up going to a party mm. and there was a girl there and she'd been with this guy for like five or six years mm. and I was really on fire about theology of the body <laughs> and I was like so are you gonna get married or you know and she was like she she was said yeah I want to have a family I want to get married but hasn't happened yet so yeah. sort of um, yeah I talked to her a bit about the course I encourage her to come mm. to holy hour um, she's one of those people that thinks that you can you don't need to go to church you just pray mm. at home and that's enough so I was trying to explain what's the power of going to church and ha receiving the Eucharist um, and just trying to make her realize that yeah if if um, her boyfriend hadn't you know, they didn't talk about marriage or engagement by that stage. What was holding him back? It was, to me, just a case of him using her but not committing mm. to her. Yes. And she really did want to have a family. So, um, yeah. And and then I didn't know what happened, but after, mm. like, um, one or two years after, I heard that they'd broken up and she met someone else. So, mm. yeah, I think they are that that's God acting you know to sort of make these things happen but yes i really am um passionate to try and help people to if to realize that if they are being used because when you're in love you don't often see mm. that so yes. it's just to equip people with that knowledge to be able to identify when they are being used and to that they have dignity and they need to yes. fight to preserve it yeah. yes i know one of my friends she um said that her a lot of her friends because she's in her 20s mm. you know they sleep around but they they say that they want to get love and that's why they sleep around but then yeah. after it they feel use and and she said she'd you know like to just stay chase or stay you know a virgin yeah. till she meets her spe a special one yeah 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 i mean and then you know society now makes it that it's acceptable to do that so um, it can be hard also on the other hand if you don't and then people think like oh what's wrong with you mm. but at the end of the day um, that is more it's more precious um, if if you do remain chaste and you save that for your husband um, so it's good like to pray you know that you're praying for your future husband or your future wife mm. um, and you'll know when when you meet them yeah yeah, uh, that's a, a wonderful good news, and and I suppose you need to be in a community or need to get support mm, to do this, mm, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So have good friendship circle support, mm. um, have a good church community. And they run these courses too, love and responsibility. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so cool. um, they have love and responsibility, theology of the body. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. It's been great having you. It's very inspiring, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, life. and God bless you. God bless. You have been watching Spirit of Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye, and God bless you. Yeah.